Hi everybody, my name is Marta Mama, I'm your basic queer bitch and I'm super excited because we have Drag Race España season 3 coming! Woo of course I will be covering this season, remember that I'm not here to give you my opinion, honestly no one cares, I'm here to give you the references, the cultural background, I'm here to tell you how we're living it in Spain. So if you want to follow this journey with me, remember to subscribe, like this video, share it. You have my PayPal account down below in case you want to support my channel. And uh, let's go review the Meet the Queens. Three, two, one. So this Meet the Queens aired past Sunday. It was March 19th, I believe. And they told us that the season three will start April 16. So we still have almost a month, but well, that's okay because there is a lot to get into. Uh, this uh, Meet the Queens episode, I think, was filmed between episodes two and three. I don't know if that gives you guys any information. The memo that the queens got for the looks was wearing silver and another color that production gave them. So those are the looks that you're going to see. Anyway, you know, I don't review the looks or anything. You have any other channel for that. So if you're interested in, you know, the looks and everything, go watch somewhere else. I'm just here to talk about, you know, the girls, who are they? Why are they there? What's going on? First of all, this cast was leaked like a long, long time ago when they were filming, uh, they leaked the whole cast on Twitter. It's not something that, even if you stay away from spoilers, because I always do, uh, you knew about the cast, exactly. So, I don't know, I would have loved to discover them here in the Meet the Queens, but everyone knew the cast, even if you didn't want to know the cast. But well, they started in alphabetical order, so the first one we're going to talk about is Bestia. Bestia is 30 years old and she is from Leganes in the outskirts of Madrid. And she is like a very feral, wild, punk rock girl. Leganes is a place in Madrid that has like a pretty big relation with uh, heavy metal. They even have a street in Leganes called ACDC Street. So, uh, yeah, it makes sense, kind of, in my mind. And so that's what you get to see with the video. But who is Bestia? Bestia, the thing you have to understand is that she is a multidisciplinary artist. She can do everything, basically. She can play instruments. She can paint. She can dance. She can do everything and she is a very creative person. I don't think that you could really see who Bestia is with that look. That's not the most representative look of Bestia, but I think she's like one of the biggest fan favorites that we have in this season of Drag Race España and everyone is very excited about. You know, she brings a little bit more alternative vibes and yeah, she seems a cool, a cool girl. I don't know her personally, but everyone that has seen her loves her. So yeah, cool, bestia. Next one is Chanel Anorex. She is 31 years old and she is from Salamanca. She defines herself as a monster queen. I see her more as a like cartoony queen. Yes, she does like the shaping of the teeth and she wears white contacts and everything but if she defines herself as monster i'm no one to say anything different but i consider monster drag to be something a little bit different and what can we say about chanel she i think in her meet the queen she defines herself a little bit like the villain of the season it's like in the edit and how she speaks about herself like she wants she lets out that she is like mean for some reason. It reminds me a little bit of, you know, Dovima in season one, kind of. And well, I think that like 
choices, you know. Uh, remember, this was filmed between episodes two and three, so things had already gone on. So I don't know if that's how she was feeling in that moment between those episodes. So that's just the role that she wants to portray. But I don't know. I don't like mean people, to be honest. So I don't know why you would choose to sell yourself as like someone that is cutthroat and mean and be careful with me. And I don't know. I'm not into that, but... Her looks are amazing, and I think people are going to like her out of drag as well. So, let's see. Next is another of our fan favorites. She is Clover Bish. She is 24 years old, and she is from Barcelona. Uh, like, Darby will surely know her. And yes, she is a cis girl. And everyone talks about, oh yeah, another cis woman and this and that. And I would love for us to address this and then we're going to move on. Yes, she is a cis woman that does drag. She is the second cis woman drag queen that is on Drag Race after Victoria Scone. And okay, that is amazing because as a cis woman, you have a lot more obstacles and, you know, a lot of people wouldn't even consider her a drag queen and all that. And praise to her, but uh, we're going to address it. And then we're going to treat her as any other drag queen because that's what we should do. Just repeat after me. What do you call a cis woman that does drag? We call her a drag queen. Do we call her a bio queen? Do we call her a hyper queen? No, we call her a drag queen, okay? So we're going to talk about everything else about her that is interesting other than her being a cis woman. She has a lot more interesting things about herself than the gender that was assigned to her at birth. Let me tell you who she is. She is a very cool gal. She is a reviewer as well. She has always done reviews of Drag Race, like reactions and such of Drag Race on TikTok and on social media. So that's where I know her from. She is the youngest, youngest, youngest queen this season. And she's also the one that has less experience in drag. I think she has only been doing drag for a year. It wasn't even a year, I believe, when they filmed. So awesome. I <laughs> love that. But um, the story with Clover is that in Spain for Drag Race España season two, they had this viewing parties, the official viewing parties that the like the management for all the Drag Race España events had in Madrid. And in those parties they watch the episode of the previous the queen that was eliminated in the last episode always came and they always had like this you know lip sync battle drag queen contest every single party okay and in the finale all the winners of every single party battled each other and then there was one winner so the absolute winner of the Shantae party lip sync battles was Clover Bish she won over a lot of very experienced and very famous drag queens here in Spain. She lip syncs, like she is a dancer, so her lip syncs are amazing, but it's more about, I think, the charisma and the story that she tells. And she always has these super iconic moments in her lip syncs and she won that. And the prize for that was going directly to the final stages of the casting of the auditions for season three. And now she's in season three and I'm super excited, super, super excited for her. A lot of people don't understand this as uh, because she talks about the empowerment of the black woman and everything. She is Afro-Latina. I think she is half Cuban, so that's why she says that she is a person of color and she defines as such. Yes, she is fair skinned, uh, she is mixed race, I believe, but uh, that's what she brings. And you know, she does her little cute rap thing and she feels awkward afterwards. And I just think it's lovely. And yes, this is a person that was a huge fan of Drag Race, not only fan of Drag Race like the TV show, but she would be at every single event 
cheering all the queens on and she doesn't have a lot of experience in drag but I think she is such a fan of the show and I don't mean the fans that watch it on TV and say I could have done that better I, could. I think that she loves the show so 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 much and she is also critical with the show so 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 much that she's going to bring the fan perspective that maybe Alaska brings I consider Alaska to be one of the best uh, contestants in Drag Race history just because she loved Drag Race so much um, that she was able to just let go a little bit you know become part of the thing that she loved and it wasn't about how people were going to perceive them and all that and be becoming famous and I think she brings something like very fresh of someone that is completely and absolutely in love of drag and I'm super excited for her clever I love you love you rooting for you ah! next up is another reviewer it's drag chuchi she is 32 years old and she's from las palmas de gran canaria and she is the canary island drag queen of the season i hate how they express this like there is supposed to be one canary island drag and only one per season to fill this quota and i don't know i'm not a fan of that like you know I don't like that, but she is a reviewer. She has been reviewing Drag Race España in her channel with Drag Ego, and she is like the kindest, sweetest person. I love her very much. I consider her like my sister reviewer. We had a very good relationship. I'm so excited for her. She won El Carnaval de las Palmas de Gran Canaria. Talked about this many different times. You know what it is in 2019 and she is so 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 cool and her partner is her stylist I, I believe it's partner Kilian Atelier is her boyfriend and he is the designer and the stylist that does everything for her so I think they make a killer couple I just love Chuchi so much she is like so kind and cute and I just love her. And what she brings in comparison to any other drag queens, you know that Canary Island drag queen is already pretty like androgynous and gender fuck, but it's even more so for Chuchi. She has always had this as a big part of her drag identity. She is a bold queen, so you're not probably going to see a lot of hair from her she always has amazing head pieces and such you know that is typical of canary island drag but for her it's like specially because she is usually wearing a pretty well decorated bald head and as you know here we support bald bitches so next up is ornella gongora repeat after me because no one is pronouncing this name correctly Ornella Gongora, okay? She is 35 years old and she is from Alicante and she is Benedita Bondage's sister. It makes sense once you see like their age and the cabaret style and where they're from. So they're sisters. And I heard that she got her drag name from, you remember this thing from Will and Grace that they said that your drag name was your first pet's name and the street you grew up on well her first pet was called Nella and the street she grew up on was Calle Gongora. Gongora is one of the most famous poets that we have in Spanish literature so from that Nella Gongora or Nella Gongora and yeah she is a singer she does cabaret she does acting so I think she's going to be like super cool i'm excited to see her acting her meet the queens was already like a whole story you know so i'm excited to see her too next up is kelly roller kelly roller is 30 years old and she is from torremolinos malaga she's one of the big staples of torremolinos drag uh, she's been doing drag for a long time and she's the roller skater queen of the season torremolinos i've spoken about torremolinos many times before uh, it's one of the big places for like gay 
resorts and gay tourism in Spain, we would have three main places where you would go on vacation to this like gay resorts and almost whole villages of gay things, which are Sitges in Barcelona, Torremolinos in Malaga, and Mas Palomas in the Canary Islands. So yeah, I think she defines herself. I've he I heard her say this a couple times. She defines herself more as a roller skater than as a drag queen. And drag for her is a little bit more about being able to make money while skating than just, you know, being a drag queen. But well, uh, she is very charismatic and she can sing and she is the type of queen that would grab a mic and entertain a whole audience and a whole bar for hours and hours and hours. Sometimes, because I think she is in these like very gay places where the audience is mainly cis gay men, um, her jokes sometimes are a little bit like old school and not that like, I don't know, inclusive or I, I don't know. Um, she's not the most woke queen ever, I guess, but uh, she has a lot of experience and she's one of the hardest working queens that we have in Andalusia. So praise to her. Next up is Maria Idilia. She is 41 years old and she is from Venezuela, but now she works in Madrid. Madrid has this like gay quarter, like West Hollywood, but in Madrid we call it Chueca. And she would perform a lot in very famous gay bars in Chueca. Uh, I don't know this queen, I've never seen her, but what I know is that everyone that I have spoken with adores her and a lot of people that I trust very, very much love her to pieces. So I think she's going to be one of the more, um, you know, likable drag queens that we have. She brings a lot of experience. She brings a lot of comedy. She brings a lot of camp. I think she can sew as well. And I don't know, I'm excited for likable drag queens, you know? I'm excited to get to know her because I didn't really know her before I, know, I knew of her. But I really want to see what she brings. Next up is the queen I'm most excited about. She is Paquita. She is 28 years old and she is from Sevilla, Andalusia. I'm very excited about her because Paquita comes from the drag house, drag family, drag collective called Las Niñas. And she is actually my drag mother's sister. So that would make her my drag aunt. So this is us all together. I love, love, love Las Niñas. I love Paquita. A lot of drag fans in Spain have been asking for one of these drag queens from Las Niñas to be on Drag Race because they are very, very, very well known here in Spain. They're one of the most successful drag families, drag houses, drag collectives that we have here. You might remember her because she was on The Switch. The Switch was a drag race competition reality TV show from Chile and she was in season two with Gia Gunn. Uh, you can watch that like full on YouTube. You don't have to search very hard, but yeah, she was like the first one out. Gia Gunn, a lot of drama and yeah, that happened many, many years ago and you can really see her glow up. Um, let's talk a little bit about uh, what Paquita brings because uh, she is the biggest fan favorite. She's my biggest favorite. Super excited for her. So Las Niñas, this uh, drag family that she comes from, they're a group of drag queens from Sevilla and they are very uh, avant-garde, but also very interested in the folklore and in Andalusian culture specifically. And they're very like alternative drag that really has nothing to do with all this generation of drag race queens. They are from Sevilla and they started making parties that were that were self-managed by them without like any promoters or any business owners. And they started making these parties that were super important for them, that became safe spaces for everyone, that were very 
trans inclusive, that were very inclusive in general. And these parties became the greatest, greatest, the most amazing parties that everyone wanted to go to. Uh, right now, they usually have their Las Niñas party and they also participate in Lolailo parties. And they're all about like having a very modern, alternative, avant-garde view on Andalusian folklore and having this like political view on drag not only political like in the big things and the speech that you give but making it really a very inclusive safe space for everyone where you can really explore things artistically and i, I just love them very much Paquita out of drag is a makeup artist, so she is amazing at makeup. She has the most gorgeous face that we have seen in Drag Race. Like, in she reminds her face the way that her face impresses me was similar of like taste. You know, her face, her beauty was just like <gasps> gobsmacking. <laughs> you know, she, it was amazing. Yes, but she also brings like the big personality. She is very irreverent. She is completely confident. And I love that in her Meet the Queens, she was not convincing you to like her. She was letting you know that uh, you are very lucky because you're going to be able to enjoy of her beautiful face and all her talent. She can sew, she can do pole dancing, uh, she even won an award or a competition or something doing pole dance and she is all about, well, her natural boy hair is like up to her butt crack. She is all about the hair, the natural hair. She loves people with long hair. She hates me because I'm bald, you know. She wants everyone to have a huge, beautiful mane and... She's also a lot about not having to necessarily pad or make your body look in a different way. She would, she, her drag is very typically very cinched at the, at the waist. She is very thin. She's usually pretty naked and she makes drag and she makes all of her looks, but she makes them in a very interesting way. If you've ever been to a show from Paquita, you would know that every show is completely different from the last one. She can sing, she can do many things, but what she is a specialist on is having making every single show a very iconic, iconic moment. She's the person everyone talks about when, like the next day, not only because she's beautiful, but she understands how to... Get, grab your attention, really, you know? Paquita is probably one of the biggest fan favorites of the season. Since the Meet the Queens is out, there are there have been so, so many memes about Paquita online. Uh, even, you, can, you can't imagine the amount of memes. This is giving me life. It's giving me everything. Team Paquita, hashtag Team Paquita was even trending on Twitter. So you can imagine, and the season hasn't even started yet. So get ready for all of the memes in the world. They even had problems because in one of the memes, they put Paquita's face on a virgin. So that, you know, that will backlash immediately in Spain. People getting death threats and a lot of homophobic, transphobic, xerophobic comments. It, it's been terrible it's been wonderful it's giving me life i'm super excited about her her meet the queens her videos are one of the most watched and share and a lot of people talk about her that she's like the favorite drag queen of your favorite drag queens the same thing they say about sasha colby they're saying about her so everyone is super 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 excited for her all the drag queens here in spain uh, our team Paquita, but something that n maybe not a lot of people know is that she is very, 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 very professional. Yes, she is very irreverent, but she is a very hard worker and very professional and a big, you know, she doesn't take drag too seriously, but she wants everything to be perfect and in order, but she can also be irreverent and stupid and this confidence that comes within. I'm just 
super excited for her. Her, I'm sure that you're all Team Paquita. Remember that I am going to be 100% biased. And if you want the objective truth, don't come to my channel because I'm just going to be myself. Next up is Pink Chadora. She is 38 years old and she was born in Algeciras, Cadiz, but now she lives in Málaga. And I think she works in Torremolinos, just like uh, Kelly Roller, so I'm sure they know each other. And her name is actually a play on words. It's like a pun because pink is like the color pink and Chadora doesn't mean anything, but Pinchadora comes from the verb pinchar, which would be to poke something or to put a needle on something. Specifically, it also means to put a needle on a record. And pinchadiscos or pinchadora would be a DJ. And she got her name because she started playing records like from the 80s and the 90s. And she was like this DJ at the party. So pinchadora means the DJ. She says that she brings rural drag, drag that is not necessarily from Madrid or Barcelona because, you know, most of the drag queens here end up living in Madrid or Barcelona if they want to make a living out of drag. She was also in another drag competition reality show in Spain uh, pretty recently called Regias del Drag, this TV reality show competition started in Mexico and they brought it to Spain pretty recently and she was part of the cast. So people in Spain are already pretty familiar with Pink Chadora. She is a very funny queen, but she is also a very smart queen, okay? And she brings drag to a different environment, not only to the nighttime, dark clubs and such. She even has her own poetry book she just released that so she's trying to bring drag a, to a different place not only madrid and barcelona and not only to the dark club night scene next up is pitita she is 27 and she is from barcelona she gets her name from pitita ridruejo which one of, was one of the big socialites in Spain and one of the big faces of high society in the 80s and the 90s and all that. I've seen a lot of people comment that she was bringing old Hollywood. For me, what she brings was the vision that the high society ladies in the 80s and the 90s had on old Hollywood. Does that make sense? A lot of people weren't getting like her overdrawn lips and everything, but for me, that is like the very characteristic from that period of time. She also gets inspired on normal everyday people, uh, very camp characters here in Spain as well. So yeah, I'm excited to see what she brings because I didn't know this queen before. Uh, she is a seamstress. She is a designer. And yeah, I'm always excited for designers and seamstress because I think they bring like a creative vision. It's not only about knowing how to sew, it's like having the creative process and know how to develop an idea. And one thing I want to talk about because there's a lot of people saying, oh, you have Paquita and you have Pitita and they have like basically a very similar name and everything. Okay, in Spain, Ita, would be what you add to a word to make it a diminutive. Ita or ito, in the case of it's a feminine word, we use ita. And we would use diminutives when you want to say that something is either small or you want to give it like a term of endearment. For example, for me, growing up, my whole family called me Martita. And that's what happens with like, you have a bottle, it's una botella, if you have like a small cute bottle, you would say botellita because it's small. Ita is just a way to end the words that means like small and cute and tiny and how you would call children probably or smaller things. So Ita, is, they don't seem familiar names for us. Paquita would be like little paca and pitita is like a short name for something else that I'm not sure about but it's not the same name it's just a very familiar ending of a word in Spain it would be like saying little 
something, you know, little Marta. That's how we say little Marta in Spain. Next up is Vania Vainilla. She is 39 years old and she is from Zaragoza, but now she lives in Madrid. This queen has 22 years of drag under her belt. 22 years. Here in Spain, we would say that she has tablas. Que tiene tablas. Tablas are like wood boards that a stage would be made with. So we would say that she has a lot of stage in her. She has spent a lot of time on stage. She defines herself as a comedian first and a drag queen after that. She is a comedian that just dress, dresses up in these clothes. And her drag name comes because before being Vania Vainilla, she was with another drag queen. Her drag name was Evania. She only stayed with Vania. And when she had to do a Facebook account, they asked for a last name. So Vania is very similar to the Spanish word for vanilla, which is vainilla. So now she is Vania vainilla. So I'm excited for funny queens. I don't want to put queens into boxes. Like this is the comedy queen of the season. Um, she is a comedian and that's it. Okay, one of the many funny people from this season. Next up is Bisa. She is 34 years old and she is from Mexico, but now lives in Barcelona. I don't know a lot about her, but I know a lot of people that have seen her and everything. I think, I guess, that her name, Bisa, comes from, you know, the visa you need in order to move to another country and start working there, like a working visa. I think her name comes from that, but I'm not sure. We had a, we have a lot of Latinas in the season, so I'm very excited for that. She is a dancer. Uh, I have heard that her shows are just amazing and that she can really put up a lip sync. She is also a reviewer, so you can check up her channel where she ex explains a lot of things. She explains her experience auditioning for other shows like La Mas Draga. So she seems like a cool gal. And her looks are always over the top. And she does a lot of things about uh, Mexican folklore and all of that. And she is the queen that probably has more engagement, her announcement for the Meet the Queens on social media because she brings a lot of fans from Latin America. I think they realize that a lot of the people that are watching internationally Drag Race España are from Latin America. So they wanted to, you know, pay tribute to her and put someone that is famous for them, well known, and they can root for. So those are the 12 queens for Drag Race España season three. Rumor has it that there may or may not be a queen number 13 in the cast. I don't know. I don't know about that, but well, if you know, if you know any spoilers, don't bring any spoilers to my comment section. You can comment everything else, but don't bring the, spo the spoilers down here, please. And that's it. Those are the 12 queens from the 12 queens, nine of them are over 30 years old, which I kind of live for. But I also love the part as a viewer, as someone that is in Spain and does drag and goes to drag shows. I like when they bring people that I don't know and I've never heard about. I love when they discover new fresh faces that I didn't know of. I didn't know of Inti and I love her very much. I didn't know of, I don't know, Judigi and I love her very much now. So. Um, yeah, they're all pretty well established drag queens right now in Spain. So this new season of Drag Race España season three will start on April 16th. You can watch it on Wow Persons Plus and if you're in Spain, you can watch it at Atres Media Premium. Uh, I'm so excited to be, of course, I will be covering the season and bringing you reviews, cultural references, all the background and everything. So if you want to stay for that, please remember to subscribe, like this video, share the knowledge, share the love, share this video with your friends so we can all live this together. 
If you want to support my channel, you have my PayPal account down below. I want to thank very, very much uh, Emma, Marion, Jessica, and Nick, because thanks to you, I was able to buy this ring light that I have here. Thank you very much. And that's all for today. I want you to tell me who your favorite queen is. Uh, just say Paquita. It's good enough. Okay? Okay. See you for the next one. Bye-bye.